This morning we're in John 21 it's for Sunday school. We're continuing our theme of where are you going? And it doesn't take us very long to find out where our person we're studying this morning is going because he tells us. John chapter 21. John writes, Afterwards, Jesus appeared again to his disciples by the Sea of Tiberias. It happened this way. Simon Peter, Thomas, called Didymus, Nathaniel from Canaan and Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two other disciples were together. I'm going out to fish, Simon Peter told them. And they said, we'll go with you. So they went out and got in the boat, but that night they caught nothing. We're studying uh, the story of Simon Peter this morning. Peter tells us immediately where he's going. Peter says, I'm going fishing. Now, is that the Andy Griffith Show approach? Are we going to take down the fishing pole and meet me at the fishing hole? Is this a day of recreational fishing? No. For Peter, the idea of I'm going fishing is the same as saying, I'm going back to my old life. I'm going back to what I once did. But notice, he caught nothing. Not only did he catch nothing, but look at how the story goes. Early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. He called out to them, friends, haven't you any fish? No, they answered. He said, throw your nets on the right side of the boat and you will find some. When they did, they were unable to haul the net in because of the large number of fish. See, it says, they caught, they fished all night, but caught nothing. That's how you fish if you're a professional fisherman in Palestine. You fish at night because the, land, the water is so clear that what you do is you drop your nets at night, hoping fish will swim into it. They get caught and they get drawn up. But they've done the professional fishing all night. Here is someone on the shore who asks them, hey, what'd you catch? Worst thing you want to hear. And then he tells them to throw out the net. If you're Peter, this story begins the beginning of taking you back. Luke chapter 5 is where we see the story of the call of Simon Peter. Follow with me if you would, or if you would prefer, you can catch the words here on the screen. One day, Jesus was standing by the lake of Gennesaret. And it says in verse 4, When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into deep water and let down the nets for a catch. Now Jesus has been teaching, so we know it's at day. Simon says, But master, we've worked hard all night. You know, we've just put in a shift. We've put in our time. And we haven't caught anything. But because you say so, I'll let down the nets. When they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. They came and filled both boats so full that the boats began to sink. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' knees. Go away from me, Lord. I am a sinful man. For he and all his companions were astonished at the catch of which they had taken. And so were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, Simon's partners, also two of the guys we find in the story in John 21. Then Jesus said to Simon, Don't be afraid. From now on you will catch men. So they pulled up their boats on shore, left everything, and followed him. If you're Peter, this is the beginning of deja vu. This is the same story. We've caught nothing all night. But in the middle of the day, we catch a great multitude of fish. Peter wants to go back to that life, and it's the reminder of the last time he did this professionally. The last time he did this professionally, they caught nothing. And Jesus said, in the middle of the day, why don't you try it again? And they caught a great multitude of fish. Maybe that's why in verse 7, the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, it's the Lord. As soon as Simon Peter heard him say, it's the Lord, he wrapped his outer garment around him, for he had taken it off, which means he was dressed to do this professionally, and jumped into the water. The other disciples followed in the boat, 
towing the net full of fish, for they were not far from shore, about a hundred yards. When they landed, they saw a fire, a burning coals, there with fish on it. Isn't that interesting? They can't catch fish. Jesus already has some cooking for breakfast and some bread. The next place we see Peter going is to the fire. Now, the fire word here is this weird set of letters you see, anthracion. My Greek professor, I'm sure, is happy that I probably just butchered the way that's pronounced. But anthracion. Anthracion is only used twice. Of all the words used for fire in the New Testament, anthracion is only used twice. Anybody want to take a guess where it's used the second time? That's right. It's used in John 18. It's used when Peter denied Jesus. Flip over there. Simon Peter and another disciple were following Jesus because his disciple was known to the high priest, that would be John. He went with Jesus in the high priest's courtyard, but Peter had to wait outside at the door. All right? And the girl on duty there came and said this to Peter. You're not one of the disciples, are you? The girl at the door asked Peter. He replied, I am not. It was cold, and the servants and officials stood around. The NIV here says, a fire they had made to keep warm. Peter was also standing with them, warming himself. That word for fire, again, you see, is anthracion. It's anthracion. It's the charcoal fire. Skip down to verse 25. As Simon Peter stood warming himself, Peter standing next to the fire still. He was asked, you're not one of the disciples, are you? He denied it, saying, I am not. One of the high priest's servants, a relative of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, Malchus. Malchus' relative, his cousin, his brother, his something, challenged him, saying, didn't I see you with him in the olive grove? Again, Peter denied it. In that moment, a rooster began to crow. It's a charcoal fire, only used twice in the New Testament. If you look at the New American Standard Version, they said, you know, now the slaves and the officers were standing there having made a charcoal fire. John 21, when they got to land, they saw a charcoal fire. The NIV, the New American Standard makes it very clear. There's a connection between this fire. One of the greatest senses we have to evoke memory is what? It's smell. Right on the nosy, it's smell. Smell has the power to call back memories. I have a cousin who cannot stand the smell of roses because it reminds her of our great-grandfather's funeral where she got physically ill because of all the flowers. So because it's a reminder of death and trauma of dealing with you know, her first, really first major funeral as a child, she can't not stand the smell of any flowers, really. Went to her wedding, there were no flowers. Because for her, that sense memory brings back that thought. Peter has to deal, not only with how he began the mission, but where things started to go loose and where he lost the mission. You know, we began our study of this topic with Judas. Judas betrayed Jesus, but so did Peter. If Judas was at such turmoil he took his life, what's Peter standing? And what does it mean when you get the whiff of that charcoal? But it gets even more interesting. Because a refrain, a refrain begins within the text. After breakfast is 